are uh, going to be talking about financial analytics, how business analytics and industry application with the industry use cases on financial analytics. So the today's agenda is first of all, I'm going to introduce you on financial analytics. Second being the use case that we're going to do on banking and third, how we can help you in, uh, you know, how D4 can help you achieving your goals and demands and how, uh, what, what all we can offer you. So again, what is financial analytics? If we talk about today's world, in today's highly competitive business environment, companies need more from finance than accurate financial statements and reports. We see accurate financial statements and reports is something that people are doing from like a lot of years, you know, they've been doing it, but something needs to be extracted. Something useful needs to be extracted from this data that we can, uh, you know, rely upon and we can use it to predict uh, further uh, things that are going to happen in future. They need forward looking predictive insights that can help shape tomorrow's business strategy, improve day to day decision making in real time. See, in the end, every company needs, you know, needs to meet the customer demand, uh, demands and the profit basically. So they need something so that something, a strategy or something that can predict what is going to happen in the future. So now, why do we need financial analytics? These, like there are six points that have been jotted down in the, that you, you all can see in the presentation as well, that these are the things that are faced by uh, all the companies usually day to day on a daily basis, basically. Uh, so first be what is our risk exposure with specific customers and how does each customer relationship affect working capital? Second be how can we streamline and enhance our business processes to make them more efficient? Third, are we investing in the right opportunities based on the capital and or the, or the revenue? And how do our business decisions affect our key value drivers? How profitable are my products and services across sales channel and customers? Fifth being, which customer segments may offer the largest margins now and in the future? And how are those margins affected by the choices we're making today? What future events could affect our stock price? These are all the problems that have been faced by any company, being it a small company or a major MNC. Every company is facing this nowadays who haven't adopted financial analytics. So just to, you know, so now how finance as a partner can help us as a partner to the business. First, you know, finance can bring uh, too many aspects of business, right? Well, beyond the traditional role of providing a standard set of financial reports year after year. You know, rather than providing just the financial reports, there's a lot into finance that analytics can help. Second, financial analytics arms CFOs with the tools to make sense of an increasingly complex world. Third, by combining internal financial information and operational data with external information such as social media, demographics, and big data, finance analytics may address critical business uh, questions with ease, speed, and accuracy. So now, uh, you know, now we're going to jump to the future, the, like the future thing, the how finance analytics, financial analytics can help us. First, you know, it gives an it, it gives a picture of the future basically. First, being seen to the future, it provides us a forward-looking strategy insights, not not just backward-looking financial reporting. You know, that is what we they have been doing for so many years. So now we want something that can predict future, turn mountains of data into nuggets of insight. That is something that filters and analyzes large amounts of data promptly and easily. You know, even if we have a large, large chunk of data, we can, you know, easily filter the data, analyze it. And that is something that is also, in a, you know, fraction of seconds or like very less span of time rather than what we used to do, uh, you know, in the past, you know, building the reports and we're making the reports and then we're getting uh, results and out, out of that. That is something that is hard. So why not do something that is, that uh, can retrieve and extract data and, show the outputs in a much easier and productive way. Third, we put the pieces together. That is something, you know, we have to combine internal and external data to generate insights that weren't possible or practical before. Right? I hope that is self-explanatory that we, we can combine both the data, internal and external data that we have to generate insights that was not possible because there was no analytics earlier. And now paint a picture. You know, see, uh, if you be using analytics, there's something that we do is different different 
tools for picturizing the data. Once we have done the, uh, the analytics and everything, so we would, for example, a tablet is also the thing that we used for picturizing the data. We have the results, but how are we going to represent it and show it to people? That is, you know, that is something we can do not have to explain. If I show you a graph or a Venn diagram, that is much easier for you to understand rather than th uh, like reading out the theory about something or the results that have been, you know, built in some software. And uh, fifth, be uh, like be more strategic. Boost the finance functions, values, and credibility as a strategic partner to the business. So these were all the benefits that financial analytics uh, has basically. So what? Alright, okay. So you know what to do now. If I talk about beginning the end, first what we have to do is. We have to start by identifying critical business problems that need to be solved and then work backwards to see how na how finance analytics can help, right? We all are facing different, different problems in our industrial businesses. So first, what we have to do, if we have to do analytics on something and we need solution or results on something, first of all, we need to first identify our problems, all right? Then start small, identify areas where a small pilot program could generate a high amount of value with minimum effort and investment. Third, we take out the trash. Now we have gathered the data also and the problems also. Now we have generated, you know, the minimum effort and investment. And now the third part being take out the trash. Carefully organize, structure and manage your data sources. Remember the old, uh, this thing, garbage in, garbage out thing. And never stop tweaking and improving. As you get experience in finance analytics, continually look for ways to use it more effectively and strategically. Right, now you, if somebody, if I talk about myself or somebody who has a certain experience of finance analytics, now we have started doing it so we can, you know, look for, like, you know, we can do permutation and combination, look for different ways, how we can utilize the skills that we have for financial analytics. And we can use different, different tools for analyzing and, you know, like, in the end, uh, we can get out the more productive results for the business that we're running. Now, analytics, big data, you know, is basically, uh, uh, you know, especially a promising and differentiating for a financial services company. So with no physical products to manufacture data, the source of information is one of the most argu uh, arguably their most important assets. So if we talk about data, you know, if you have to perform analytics on anything, the most important and the critical part of it is big data, right? The data and large, large chunks of data that is being generated because if data won't be there, we won't be able to analyze and predict what's going to happen in future. We won't be able to uh, analyze and predict uh, what do we have to do to improve our business, how and to increase our productivity and profitability. So now uh, I'll talk about the trends in big data analytic analytics. And uh, first is how financial services organizations are approaching big data analytics. First being Customer analytics are driving big data analytics. If I talk about the variables here, first is customer centric outcomes, operational optimization, risk financial management, new business model, and employee collaboration. Big data objectives, as you can see, it is self explanatory. Uh, if I talk about the global thing, then customer centric outcomes are 49%, banking and financial markets. Uh, case mates, customer centric outcomes of 55% and everything that is something that we can see and analyze on our own. Second, uh, big, big data is dependent upon a scalable and extensible information foundation. Third, the initial big data efforts are focused on gaining insights from existing and new sources of internal data. If I talk about big data sources here, you can see a lot of these things depend, you know, transactions, log data, events, emails, social media, sensors, external feeds, freeform text, audio, etc. So you can uh, see how uh, this global that is uh, mentioned in purple and banking and financial markets that is uh, mentioned in green. So third being, fourth being, big data requires strong analytics capabilities. And now fifth being current pattern for big data. If I talk about the big data adopt, adoption, first we have to educate ourselves. We have to first focus on knowledge gathering and market observations. 
Second is second step being exploring, developing strategy and roadmap based models on business needs and challenges. Third is engaging, piloting big data initiatives to validate value and requirements. And fourth being the execution that is deployed two or more big data initiatives and continually up, uh, to apply advanced analytics. Now uh, we have now we have uh, come on the use case of banking. So see, I am just going to read out the problem statement, and now we'll see how a financial analytics can solve it. Right? LoanSmart is a leading advisory firm. Based on their clients' characteristic and needed a lo loan amount, they advise them on which financial institution to apply for loan at. So far, their recommendations have been based on just business experience. Now. They're trying to leverage power of data that they have collected so far. They want to check whether the given their clients' characteristics, they can predict how much interest rates they'll be offered by various financial institutions. They want to run with proof of, of concept for this idea. And they have given us data collected for one such financial institution, ABC Capital Limited. Basically, if I have to sum up this thing or summarize or just say it in a nutshell, then basically these they, they have to predict that how much interest rates are going to be provided. They have to predict that how uh, different, different financial institutions will provide different interest rates. So now if we have some data, so first, what we have to do, we have to first extract data, we have to cleanse the data, and then these are the certain data variables we're going to work on. First being ID, then the amount requested, amount funded by investors, third, uh, fourth being uh, interest rate, fifth, loan length, sixth, loan purpose, seventh, debt to income ratio, state, home ownership, monthly income, FICO range, open credit balance, revolving credit lines, inquiries in the last six months and employment length. So now let's summarize now what we have to do in uh, like in the process, how we have we start and we end like in the process building. First, what we do is we remove or impute missing values in the data, right? Uh, we, they, if you, if somebody has worked on it then they must have known that there are certain missing values in the data. So we have to remove and impute missing values in the data. We have to create dummy variables for the categorical variables, right? As I discussed in the previous slide, we have created variables. Then we have to break our data in three parts, right? First, speak the train, second, validation, third, test. Then we have to start building the model on train. In the first run of your model, building process check VIF for all variables. Then we have to drop the variable with high VF that is greater than 5. Drop them one by one, not all at once. Drop the one with highest VIF, run your process again, and then pick again the variable with highest VIF and drop. Keep on doing it until the VFI is, uh, is less than 5 for all the variables. Once the VIF is under control for all the remaining variables, start dropping variable one by one based on p-values. If p-value is greater than 0 0.005, 0 0.05, sorry, drop that variable. Now what we have to do, we have to, uh, you have to train, uh, you have your train model, like right? we have built the train model. Once you have all the remaining va variables with p-values less than 0 0.05, Test all the model's performance by calculating the root mean square error on test data set. You can use RMSC calculator on test data to compare multiple models. And now after the, this thing is done, now you can see uh, these are the uh, interest, these are the uh, uh, interest rate for the various uh, this thing and hence it is the uh, like the result, uh, the, basically the result that we are looking for and working on 